Hello, everyone. It says we are streaming live on Facebook. This is Tracy Eman with Women Speakers Association. And today we are uh, having an amazing guest on. Anita Russell is one of our new Global Business Connectors. Um, she's in our bookstore. She's been a WSA Premier member for a long time. We've known each other quite a long time, haven't we, mm -hmm. Anita? Yes. Yeah. And it's so it's so great to actually have you as my guest today. So thank you so much for joining. My pleasure. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, moving things around on my screen. Like we always say, it's live, so we <laughs> have to make things work. Um, so I want to share a little bit about you and then we'll talk a little bit about the topic and, and we'll kind of roll right into things. So great. Yeah, so we're our topic today is actually talking about growth from within and being uniquely you. And I think that is so important that authentic being is so important to how you how you interact with other people, um, how you speak in front of people, how you grow your business. So we're going to touch on a whole bunch of that today. And that's uh, definitely a topic I think that I don't think you can ever hear enough, personally. So I agree. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read your bio. So hang on a second. I scrolled too far. Anita D. Russell, MED CPLC, is a life coach, author, speaker, change cultivator. She is a John Maxwell certified life coach and international best-selling author with career experience in multiple disciplines, including pharmaceutical research and development, learning and development, and leadership. She is founder and creator of The Place to Soar, a social enterprise dedicated to cultivating change through daily growth and personal development. Anita's most recent publications include I Want to See Lainey's House, A Sibling Story, that was released March 2019, and present representing her deliverance journey from broken to whole. She is a co-author of the international bestseller Voices of the 21st Century, Bold, Brave, and Brilliant Women Who Make a Difference that was released just this past September, and Trusting in God, Stories That Inspire, a collection of short, short stories, testimonials, and teachings and life-changing articles from Christian authors that went on October of this past year. You have been one busy lady. <laughs> Anita resides in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And as I mentioned, she is one of our new global business connectors and definitely somebody you want to reach out to if you're in the Pittsburgh area. So thank you very much for joining me today. You're quite welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so exciting. I always love the time that we get to spend together and, and learn more about what our, our Women Speakers Premier Members, Women Speakers Association Premier Members are doing. And, and you know, it's, like, it's crazy all the things that everybody is doing. And I love that um, we're always, we're always learning, like everybody mm -hmm. has something that they can share and, and you're able to share your message. And I think that's phenomenal. Exactly. And that's actually one of the reasons I, I think I've been involved with um, WSA for about three years, maybe um, lost track a little bit. Because um, when I first got involved, I was actually still in New Jersey. And so by the time I came here, I started to use the use it a little bit more, because um, I was literally starting from scratch when I came to Pittsburgh. So yeah. And it gave you that opportunity to connect with people, right? And, mm -hmm. and make that transition. So that's, that's great. I, it's, uh, and how is life in Pittsburgh? Life in Pittsburgh is interesting. Um, it's my home city. Um, I lived in New Jersey for about 30 years. Uh, came back under not the best of circumstances. But once I got here, I realized that I was here to stay. It took me a while to kind of figure it all out and all of that, but it feels good to be home. So uh, officially uh, since 2018. So this is actually my second year of uh, being back in my home city. So it's been good. It's been good. good. Yeah, sometimes yeah. the transitions that happen that we don't expect can still turn out to be really good ones. So mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, when I came here, I was literally starting from scratch from a business perspective. I had no business contacts. I, I didn't have any of that. So I just had family. <laughs> wow. And that was basically it. So uh, I feel good about where I am now and the progress that I've made in that uh, period of time. So yeah. That's inspiring too, especially as more and more people are are needing to reinvent themselves, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of the pandemic and the different ways that we're now doing things. And some of us have been online for years, but there's still that transition that comes into play and, and, and being able to, you know, rebuild your business from scratch is pretty great that you have that power. And, I, and we really all do. It's just a matter of being able to know how to tap mm -hmm. into it, right? Yeah, definitely. And um, one of the things about me is that I have typically in, in my life done a lot of work with nonprofit organizations. So when I came back to Pittsburgh and once once I got to the point where I realized I was staying and that I really needed to get back on track of building what I had started in New Jersey, I started with nonprofit organizations. I mean, because I could connect with people. I'm volunteering. It's um you know, stuff that was making a difference. But at the same time, it enabled me to start building up a business network at the same time. So it was great. That's smart. Yeah, being able yeah. to, being able, can't, can't talk, sorry. Being able to give, <laughs> give back and also, you know, build your business and your connections along the way is, is important. Because a lot of times you go into it and you're just, you're just trying to build your connections. But if you build connections based on that relationship that you've built with those people too they're going to be a lot stronger those connections are going to be a lot warmer too mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and honestly the whole idea of making connections and and all of that it's so appropriate um from the the perspective of living in pittsburgh because i don't know if you know this the but pittsburgh is the city with the most bridges of every city in the world. We have the okay. most bridges. And if you know the history of uh, Pittsburgh with the, the steel industry and all of that, it was you know a time when the, all the bridges weren't there and it separated uh, communities, like specific communities were kind of isolated. There's three rivers here, there's lots of creeks, hills and, and all of that. But once the bridges became, started to come, it really started connecting people. So whenever I think about the concept of bridges and transitions, it, it I, I, I see that in my city. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of cool to kind of see that and metaphorically see how it relates directly to my life, this whole concept of building bridges. Wow. Yeah, no kidding, hey? That's powerful. All right, let's get started with the first question. And uh, we welcome people, if you're watching right now, just give us a hi and where you're from. We're going to periodically stop and take a look at Facebook on mobile. Uh, we don't want to lose you <laughs> right here. And um, yeah, let us know where, you, where you're located. And if you are watching on replay, go ahead and do that as well. We'd love for, we'll, we'll be circling back and checking on any comments, you know, moving forward. So if we don't get to you right today, we will get back to you for sure. So first question, you described yourself as a life coach, speaker, author, and change cultivator. How did that all come together in your personal journey? Right. So it, it's that thing that I was just talking about with the bridges. So I started off as um, I came out of college. I had a career as a research scientist. I started off in an academic environment. And then one day I decided that I wanted to cross the bridge and go into the pharmaceutical industry. So I ended up in New Jersey. That's how I ended up in New Jersey. Um, so now I'm in the pharmaceutical industry. I'm working as a research scientist you know, with the, the lab coat and the glasses and the whole nine yards and all of that. And then one day I just kind of started getting this inkling of doing something different. And so I crossed another career bridge into learning and development. And so I picked up a completely different role where um, my, my responsibilities included providing learning and development, professional development, and all of that for the, the scientific community. So I went from doing this to doing this to doing that. And then uh, the final really thing that 
like altered everything was when uh, in 2013, when I decided, and, and I, I use the word decided, but it wasn't me that decided. It was, it was my destiny. It was my purpose that was literally unfolding over those decades of time. And I realized that it was time for me to leave corporate America, which I don't know if anybody has ever done that before, but that's kind of scary. And um, I made that decision to leave corporate America because I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to have my own business. Um, and someone had planted a seed in me uh, uh, prior to 2013 about what they saw in me, a gift that they saw in me was life coaching. And at the time, I didn't really have a solid concept of what life coaching was, but she said, I, I see this as a gift in you. And so when I came out and different things started to fall into place, I realized that I was being pulled or drawn in that direction. And so I decided that I was going to um, look into certification. So I took my first certification class and I knew, once I did that, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that everything else that I had done in my life was leading up to me really understanding fully and walking in what it is I'm on the planet to do. And so life coaching and writing and speaking, those three things go hand in hand. I mean, here I am on Women's Speakers Association, but I'm a life coach. So those things go hand in hand because they're all really about helping people to kind of progress in their lives. Somebody can read my story, something goes off in them, and now they've had perhaps a developmental moment. And so it's all literally connected, but it was a journey for me to, for me to get there. And that path that you, like you said, you're, you look back on all of your, you know, your life learning and, and going through the medical field and then going into the pharmaceuticals and then going into, you know, the, the learning and development training and leadership training that kind of everything kind of like built on what you had done before, yes. including, yes, like life, like you're talking that life changes, personal changes. So what do you, what were some of the personal challenges and lessons that you learned along the way? Because those obviously really help you help other people that are maybe at various stages in that journey themselves. Mm -hmm. So as I was on that journey and making these career decisions, um, I, I didn't necessarily find that part of it uh, challenging. Uh, the idea of moving to New Jersey was not really a big deal. I kind of always knew that I wasn't going to spend all of my time in Pittsburgh and, and all of that. The real challenge for me came was when it when I was in that space of time, when I was beginning to realize that I was experiencing a different kind of call on my life. And that call required me to leave something that I was very, very comfortable with. Mm. I liked my job. There was... I had great coworkers, um, and, and I did. I had the opportunity to do a lot of really incredible things in the the roles that I had, and and all of that. So when that inkling started to come, it 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 was like I said earlier. It was actually a little bit scary. Um, it took a lot of prayer. It took a lot of me. Uh, listening to other people. Um, when I say listening to other people, I mean those people in my life in my life that I know that those people would be real with me, that they would be honest with me, that mm -hmm. if I told them something that was completely off the wall, that they would let me know it was completely off the wall. But the type of encouragement that I was getting um, from different people, I had different um, ups and downs that I was going through. Like the the last day on, on my job was on a Friday and I woke up on Monday and I was like, what the heck did you just do? You know, so it was, it was a lot of turmoil, a lot of emotional stuff that was going on inside of me. Um, and I didn't, I, I honestly, I tell people all the time, I literally listened to God when he told me it was time to leave, but I didn't really have a rock solid plan. So I was still kind of figure, trying to figure out what was going to happen? How was this all going to happen? And, and all of that. And I fell. I had some challenges financially. I had this going on. I had that going on. But in all of that, in all of that, there was always an answer 
there was always a solution when I was faced with this. And there was a period of time when I actually had to go back into uh, working. So instead of just going as a, just as an employee, what I did was I worked with a consulting firm, I got connected with them, they gave me an assignment, and I went from $0 to $50 an hour like that. So that kind of put me in a different kind of place while I'm trying to figure out what it is that God has called me to do. So day by day, one by one, incident by incident, experience by experience. Once I began to understand that I was on a journey towards being able to um, kind of serve people through life coaching, once I got that, that's when everything started to really, really just kind of flow. So even when I went through, um, when I had to come back to Pittsburgh, my mom was ill and my mom passed away that totally threw me off like it completely threw me off my game um but then finally I realized that this is where I was supposed to be so out of all of that I actually uh created this uh like a workbook journal and I broke it out into um six keys that I use to nurture and develop my nurture develop and empower my life as I was going through all of that and um so it was tough, it was hard, it was scary, but at the same time, I was able to stand on my faith, trust, and belief that I was doing what I was supposed to be and that I was just going through a very tremendous change in my life. I think, too, that you being open to the knowledge and the faith that when one door closes, mm -hmm. another door will open and that you are destined to follow that path and you know and then for you to document it in such a way that you can you know build out something that you can share with others so when they're when they're feeling like they're floundering and they don't they don't believe another door is going to open and they're they're not sure even where to look for that door i mean a door will open but we we're not always open to looking for that door right so being able to share that is is phenomenal. I can see why you chose to to go the route of a life coach mm. for that for sure. Life transitions are and they're never ending really. Right. So. They're they're always there. They're yeah. always there. And like one of the things that I um so I, it, it's really interesting because I used my life to build a coaching a life coaching platform which like, I just think that's really, really cool. So I can be like the perfect example of what can happen when you make certain decisions in your life. And I think for me, the, the primary decision that I made as I was going through all of this, because I was sort of reinventing and redesigning my life, I felt it, it's almost like I was the, the, um, the caterpillar inside the cocoon and I was fighting to to work my way out to figure out what I was really supposed to be and and all of that so there was um there's this thing that I call um I used to call it a becoming gap so it's kind of like um one of the things that I help people to do is understand where they are and then look at where they aspire to be and then there's that gap in between mm -hmm. but it's not really a gap, it's really a becoming space. And the reason I kind of dug a little bit deeper into that because a gap implies that it's something that you have to close, mm -hmm. but a space implies that it's something that's fluid. So sometimes that space will expand, sometimes that space will contract, but inside of that space is all of the growth and development that happens within you to help you to get from where you are to where you aspire to be. And so what I learned is that that space is, is I was operating in that kind of space. And in order for me to, um, to move forward in that fluid space, that's where the growth from within, and that's where the personal development, that's where all of that comes in. So the number one key in that six keys that I was talking about is you got to know yourself. Um, John Maxwell, uh, has this book, uh, 15, uh, 15, wait, what is it? Hold on. 15 valuable 
the 15 invaluable laws of growth. I'm sorry, I wanted to make sure I call that outright. And the very first law is the law of awareness. And so you have to be completely aware of who you are, not necessarily everything that you're projecting outward because it's very easy to kind of wear a mask, so to mm -hmm. speak, but that like who you are deeply within yourself, your thoughts, um, that negative self-talk that you might have, what is your real, your personal self-image, all of those things, you have to get to know yourself on a really, really intimate basis so that you can start that process of growing from the inside out. That was probably the biggest lesson that I learned in all of this as I was, you know, changing my own career and, and all of that. So know who you are inside, not, not what you're trying to convey to other people. Right, exactly. Because when you think of like self image has like more than one dimension, so mm -hmm. to speak. So there's sort of the self image that's projected that people see that these are the things that people see in you. But then you have that self image, like I look at myself, and there was a time when I was literally a functional depressive. Um, meaning that I was, uh, uh, I, I was, uh, I experienced depression to a very, very great degree, but I was able to walk through the world completely functioning. So most people were not aware that that was something that I was dealing with within myself. Mm -hmm. And so there's that public perspective or that public persona, if you will, that I was able to project, but then on the inside, I knew what I, there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of depression, a lot of guilt related to different things that I experienced in my life. So the out, the inside of me was experiencing something very different. And then the other, the last dimension is what you see when you look in the mirror. So for example, if, if you think about somebody who, um, who has um, anorexia, right? Mm -hmm. they can look at themselves, they could be like 100 pounds, but they could look at themselves and they could see themselves as overweight. So when you look at your perception of yourself and your self image, it's more than one dimension. And so you have to get to know yourself within the context of all three of those dimensions in order for you to truly, truly grow and get from that place over there to that place over there where you want to be. And all of that happens in that becoming space. And I love, I love the space like that, that, you know, the gap just sounds something like uh, it's a gap. I may not be able to overcome it. I may not be able to navigate it. I, you know, you may need to build a bridge. Um, mm -hmm. But but that space is something that you can embrace the space and, and know that you have, like you said, that ability to move around within that space and, mm -hmm. and move forward. And so it's great that you kind of took it, that gap and adjusted it. I think that's really important. Yeah. And actually, if I could, there's a quote. Um, it's a Michelle Obama quote. And this is what she says, for me, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. I see it instead as forward motion, a means of evolving, a way, of, a way to reach continuously toward a better self. That is so powerful. And when I read that quote and I was thinking about the word gap, that's when I realized it's not really a gap. It's this, this space of this like continuum or something, you know, where all this dynamic stuff is, is going on like all the time. It's a beautiful quote. And it's, mm -hmm. it's so fitting like that. I'm so glad that you found that because it really puts things into perspective. Mm -hmm. We're always becoming right? It's, it's, yes. it's continue. It's a, it is a continuum. It's something that, you know, you, whether you embrace along the way or not, you're always becoming. And mm -hmm. I think that being able to understand that probably gives you a lot more power and a lot more control. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to take a second and see if I can navigate to our video. We have some comments and, oh, and it's gonna start talking. So that's good. Um, okay, Jessica from, Jessica Simmons is watching from Ferndale, Michigan. Diana Pritchard from Texas. Lakeisha Smith is tagged 
somebody, Sherry Turner. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we'll check back again just before we go off. So it's, if we're talking about, so you, you bring this idea of growth from within and uniqueness into your coaching relationship. How do you go about doing that? And I know that you had mentioned John Maxwell's book mm -hmm. um, as sort of one of the kind of things that you kind of built some of this from as far as the sort of the, the delivery aspect of it. But would mm -hmm. you like to share that? Absolutely. So one of the things that I always try to emphasize and, and, and sort of help people to be aware of is that coaching is not about me telling you what to do. It's not about me giving you instructions or giving you these uh, 10 things that you have to do. Coaching, from my perspective and what it is I do, I use an appreciative coaching uh, perspective and it starts with self-discovery. So a person could have an issue that's going on in their life and we may come to uh, a decision or the, the client uh, may come to a decision that says, this is the topic that I want to coach on. And so part of my job initially is to help that individual to really dig into what that topic is about, what are some of the dynamics that are there. So it's all about helping them to discover and then also what are those things that you really appreciate about whatever that situation is, no matter how bad it might be or how good it might be, what are the things that you really, really appreciate about yourself? So coaching is about asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. and people, you know, and it's really interesting because I've had the experience where I'm meeting somebody for the first time in like maybe a, a, a consultation and I could kind of tell that they're expecting me to like tell them like to do something. And I don't do that. I, I just ask a lot of questions. And the reason I do that is because I'm very respectful of the fact that my role is to help this individual grow from within the inside of them. And they are the expert in their life. I'm not the expert in their life. They are. So my role, though, is to ask the right questions to help them dig through some of the stuff, some of the things that might be obstacles that are preventing them from, get, from getting to uh, a particular uh, place. But it's really about me playing this more of a navigational kind of role and just asking a lot of questions. And uh, most of the time when you ask a question, and then they begin to give an answer. As they're giving that answer, something goes off. Mm -hmm. And then they say, ah, yeah, what if I do this? Or what if I do that? And so uh, again, just emphasizing the fact that I'm there to ask a lot of questions. And also that whole thing about you being the expert of your own life. In, in your life, you are unique. I had a birthday. I mean, this whole concept of uniqueness just really, really hit home for me. I had a birthday um, in April and I turned 63, right? And I, I at one point, I just got this, uh, this thing in my head, in my spirit, and I ended up calculating, okay, I'm 63 years old. So how many seconds have I actually been on the planet? <laughs> and I realized that I have been on the planet for 2 billion seconds. Like, just let that sink in, two billion seconds. And embedded in all of that accumulation of all of those seconds is all of these experiences that I've had, just a multitude of experiences. So if you could like make a, um, like a, a micro experience map, like a pointillism painting where each one of those points in the painting represents a particular thing or experience or moment or something in your life, your picture, your micro experience map is going to look completely different from mine. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that makes us unique is all of those experiences that we have accumulated over the course of time. And so here I am 63 years later from the time when I was five minutes old to now, and I've had this abundance of experiences. That's what makes me the expert in my own life. That's what makes me unique. That's what makes you unique. And I just 
respect that. And that respect shows up in how I work with people as a life coach. You basically facilitate their ability to seek the knowledge and wisdom that they have already within themselves that they've they managed to overlook, squish down. Exactly. So forth, right? Exactly. Or they may, they simply may not have looked at it from a different perspective. So in the course of me asking questions, it prompts people to look at things from a different perspective. So if you think of it like a coin, people generally think that a coin has only two sides, but there's actually three sides, the, the heads, the tails, and then the edge. And so you can look at one thing from the head's perspective, you could look at something different from the tail perspective, but when you stand on the edge, that's really when you're able to get like a 360 view and you're able to see from a much broader perspective. And when people are able to stand on the edge and they open up their eyes and they see something broader and they see something different, that's growth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like to, that's what, that's what I like cultivating. That's what that whole thing about being a change cultivator, that's where it comes in. For me, being a change cultivator is um, daily growth, and personal development on a on a regular basis or looked at it another way it's a continuous improvement process mm -hmm. yeah i love that uh analogy about standing on the edge and and getting that view and and being open to the possibilities that you wouldn't see if all you're doing is looking at the you know the head of the coin versus the tail of the coin right exactly exactly yeah. so you know i i say that to stuff that kind of stuff to people and they're like, wow, I never really looked at it like that. Mm -hmm. And so when it's a, a, in a coaching kind of thing, it, again, it's that light bulb that's going off, but the stuff that they're discovering, it was already there. They just needed somebody to give them a little bit of guidance and ask the right question so that they could see it. So much power in asking questions and then listening to the response, mm -hmm. isn't there? Like in everything that we do, but especially when people are open to taking steps to improving their lives. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So do you have some examples of typical instructions that you might provide to your clients? Mm -hmm. So for example, um, one of the tools that I use is Clifton Strengths. So I have one particular uh, client that I thought that would be a really, really good tool for her. And essentially what Clifton Strengths is, it's, 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 it's kind of like in the category of like Myers-Briggs. Myers-Briggs is like a personality more so assessment, whereas uh, Clifton Strengths, it, it literally focus on, focuses on what are your strengths. And it's, it's based on a, a mindset that says people are much better off when they focus on developing their strengths rather than focusing on managing or improving their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I help people to do in using that tool. So there's a whole assessment that they go through. And once they're done with the assessment, they come back to me and we take a look at their top five strengths and we start to grow from there. We start to develop from there. And so I've done it. I know what my top five strengths are. And I think there's a lot of power when people can see themselves from a strengths perspective instead of, instead of from like a weakness perspective, or this is what's wrong with you and this is what you need to fix. But from a strength, like you already have these strengths, you already have this, this incredible DNA talent and all of that. So how do we just help you to do more of that? and to develop in, in that kind of way and sort of the, the, weak, the weaker areas, we figure out how to manage that and, but they'll kind of take care of themselves. That, that's how I look at it. <laughs> so they, I mean, realistically then, they're building on their strengths. And mm -hmm. when we're building on our strengths, that also puts us in that positive mindset too, right? Because like you said, it's, it's it's what they, the strengths that they already have. It's not going, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be this. I got to figure out a way. It's like, hey, this is what I am. And I feel really 
comfortable in what I'm doing. And I would love to learn how to grow and expand on this particular thing and make my expertise even, you know, more specialized or, mm -hmm. or more so, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly it. There was a time when I used to sing um, on my church choir. This is like kind of a weird example, but I used to sing on my church choir, not because I was a singer, but just because I liked that that whole social dynamic and everything. But the truth of the matter is I can't sing. That is not <laughs> one of my strengths. And no matter how many voice lessons I could go to, that's just not my ability. So I could spend a lot of my time trying to figure out how to be a better singer, or I could devote my life to being a better coach because I know I have strengths in that area. You see what I mean? So it's, it yeah. really helps people to kind of just kind of get a better sense of, wow, I need to be putting my energy and my focus over here rather than over here, because mm -hmm. this is where my life will be more profitable. And I don't mean necessarily profitable in terms of money, but profitable in terms of like abundance and growing and all that sort of thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Yes, it's so easy to get stuck in sort of that that muddiness of, oh, I need to do more of this. I need to figure out this and 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 really bring yourself down. And I think that being able to work with someone like you that can help pull people out of that and help them concentrate on on their gifts is is really important. So as we move into sort of the final part of this interview, what is the final message you would like to leave with our audience? So I have, um, I don't, I'm sure everybody out there has, has heard of um, Ernest Hemingway. And so it's, it, it's sort of been, I don't know if it's true, if it's just a legend or whatever, that he was having lunch with a bunch of his friends and his friends challenged him to see if he could come up with a six word story. And his six word story had something to do with um, uh, for sale baby shoes never used. So there's a whole lot that could be like behind those six words in that story. So the final message that I would like to leave with the audience, and this is actually a message that kind of resonates with me uh, perfectly. And it's all from that standpoint of um, being unique, growing from within. So this is my, the message of my six word Ernest Hemingway story. We were created to soar fearlessly. That's my message. Love it. Wow, that's powerful. And a lot of times, I know I said that's my message, but a lot of times the fear is on the inside. It's deeply rooted in us on the inside. So part of that growth and being in that becoming space is identifying those fears and figure out how you could move them. So I'm going to say that again. We were created to soar fearlessly. Wow. What a way to leave this today. I think everybody needs to take that away. And um, I, I would love to give you this opportunity too for people to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. um, is there a good, what's the best way for them to connect? Yeah, my website, you can always go to my website, which is the place to soar and soar is S O A R. And my you can reach out to me by email, Anita Russell at the place to soar .com. You can check me out on Amazon. I'm on Facebook. I'm just kind of out there from a social media perspective. Um, but yeah, go to my my website. And that's where you can find out a lot more about what my company, what I do under that brand, and um, different people that I'm connected to and all of that. And I certainly would like to get to know you as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I loved. I just I love the way we ended it. But I love the whole idea of not looking at things as a gap, but looking at things as a space and the fact that you need to kind of, you know, look within. And for many of us that working with a life coach, someone like yourself, who really can help ask those right questions to allow us to pull out what we, what's already inside of us yes. is yes. just, it's something that uh, I think, I think everybody should, you know, 
take a look at at some point in their lives. So, yeah. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. I look forward to connecting with you again soon. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to welcoming our next speaker chat guest next month. Thank you, thank everyone. Thank you, everybody. Stay well. Yes, definitely. <laughs>